to multiply what he has given us, whether it's our time, our talents, our treasures. And one important thing that we need to notice in this parable is that I mentioned earlier that everyone received the same amount of money. One. Right? No one received two, three, or five. All of them were distributed one mina. And this truth, as I've said a while ago, distinguishes this parable with the parable of talents, where three servants received varying amounts of talents. And here they got all the same amount. And, and do you, why do you think is this? Why do you think the Lord Jesus Christ gave this kind of parable? Now, I believe that all of us, when it comes to talents, time, and treasure, some of us have been given more. And some of us have been given less, right? And we don't have all the same time in the world. Not all of us are born at the same time. And how come this Bible is saying that we have received equal measure? Now I believe that the main emphasis here is that how much the servants have received. The emphasis is how the servants will use it. I hope you see that. It's not how much you have had in your life, you have right now. But God is looking at your heart and He wants to see how you will use even that one talent, even that one mina that he has given to you. <clears throat> and you will see this turn after the master returns. Right? One servant had ten, and the other had five. They multiplied it, they made it to work, and now they were commended by the master. Beloved, we all have the potential, the same potential to maximize what God has given to us. And the expectation from the Master is clear. He's expecting every one of them to submit and to account more than what he had given them because he left with the words, do business with it while I'm gone, right? Now for us to really understand this, God wants us to be diligent with everything that He has entrusted to us. And in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Proverbs, there's a lot of words of wisdom there. And one of these things that I find very, not only amazing, but it's really true. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 to 11. Go to the end, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? Will you, when will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a bandit, and scarcity like an armed man. From the wisdom of Solomon, he compared the ants. You serve the ants and people. The ants have no rulers, but they work diligently because they knew they had a limited time. They knew that winter will come. They knew that summer is short, so they have to store enough food for winter so that they will survive. And speaks to us, beloved. We have short time here on earth. We don't live here thousands of years anymore. And that's why we have to maximize what we have. We need to gather what we can for the kingdom of God. Not for ourselves, but for His glory and for His kingdom. Now, going back to Luke chapter 19, especially in verse 14, I don't want you to miss this. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. I believe this verse is here because it has something to say to us. That serving the master is not easy. We all know that. Serving Jesus Christ is not easy. There are a lot of people that oppose him. There are a lot of people that doesn't believe in him. But we have to keep going because we are serving the king of kings 
and the Lord of Lords, and I will come that every knee will bow before him, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So our task is to maximize the talents, the abilities, the time, and the treasures that God has given to us. <coughs> Lastly, we need to be trustworthy. Verses 15 to 27. This parable ends with the master returning and calling his servants to give an account of how they have used his minutes. And without a doubt, this speaks to us, beloved, that time will come that all of us will also appear in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we call this the judgment seat of Christ. And all of us will face Him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while he is in the body, whether good or bad. And here Paul teaches that all believers need to prepare for this day when Jesus Christ will judge not our salvation, but for rewards based on our trustworthiness as his stewards. 1 Corinthians 4, 2 says, Now it is required. It doesn't say now it is suggested. It says now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. See, there's a requirement for that. And very, very clear that trustworthiness or faithfulness of the steward is demonstrated by the diligence in multiplying the gifts entrusted to them. Now, before we end, I would like for us to notice the master's respond to these stewards. Beginning in verse 17, it says, Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. Now, with these words, there are two important things that we can see here. First is that this, there is a public commendation. The master in front of the rest of the people there commended his servant and said, Well done. Aren't you expecting those words from the Lord when you finally reach heaven? Don't you want to hear those words from the Lord Jesus Christ himself? Well done, good and faithful servant. I'm sure all of us would like to hear those commendations. The other important truth is that there is promotion. Because of the servant's trustworthiness, he will be given ten cities to rule. Now looking at this truth, beloved, we need to erase in our memories and our thinking that when we get to heaven we're going to be just floating there in the air and in the clouds with in the clouds with you know heart and singing forever no if you read the book of revelation god will establish his kingdom here on earth heaven the new heaven and the new earth that's why in this parable he this servant was given ten cities to rule beloved this is, the, this is a warning for us. Because when Jesus Christ finally establishes His kingdom here on earth, we're going to reign with Him. We're going to be given responsibilities according to our faithfulness, according to our diligence, according to what we have accomplished for the Lord Jesus Christ. 